hello there, hi, making the grand assumption that if I had stayed in skating, I would have been an Olympian. Here are the reasons why I decided to not be an Olympic figure skater. I thought I would talk about this today in particular because I had a realization that had I stayed in figure skating as my main thing, I'd probably be retired or retiring this year. Whoa. <laughs> they tell you when you start competitive skating that it is a very short shelf life as a career. They are not wrong. I'd probably be there now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's definitely a sport that the younger you do it, the better you are at it, which is bad for development, but you can do the things. It's a whole like issue. That being said, even though I quit being a competitive skater, I've still got the damage. I am going to need ankle surgery and knee surgery. The cartilage is not there. When you're doing the jumps and you're that intense on your legs, the cartilage just gets worn away. But yeah, so we are talking about ice skating today though. Growing up, skating was my main thing. I started when I was eight. I was competitive until I was 18 and there we go. I wasn't the worst skater. I was quite good, not to be up myself there, but I was actually decent. I was competitive. I've got to say I was all right. Got to have confidence. When you do competitive figure skating, your goal is always the Olympics. Like, even if you don't say it, the Olympics is your goal. And of course, you might have coaching or Disney on ice or some showcases sort of around the mix there, but in your mind, you're still going Olympics. But there was a defining point in my figure skating career where I had to make the choice of Am I going to go the Olympic route or am I not? And I chose not to, evidently. In the United States, there are central rinks where they really do train the Olympians. And on the competition circuit, you've got state, regionals, sectionals, nationals, worlds, Olympics, pretty much. That's how it goes. You're always trying to win at each one to get to the next one. And I was in Springfield, Missouri, skating at Jordan Valley Ice Park um, with Parker the Penguin, which I got to wear the costume of once, so good. I was in the middle of nowhere as far as skating goes. And so if I was going to elevate my skating life, I was going to have to move state. And specifically, I was probably gonna go to Colorado. And I was invited out there one of the scouts was Candy. She visited our rink and she was the original coach for Evan Lysacek. And Candy really wanted to take me. <laughs> Sounds weird. So I remember her sitting down with my parents and asking about it. She lived out in Colorado. We were gonna have to pick up our family and move. And that was gonna be my choice of, all right, I'm going to try to go to the Olympics. <laughs> Such a weird thing to say aloud, so weird. Um, and my parents, their parenting method was always to kind of just knock me down and see if that would help me grow. <laughs> they didn't want me to get a big head about myself and so I was always getting negative feedback about everything I did. Even if I won a competition, they'd be like, right, here's everything you did wrong now. <laughs> Not to knock my parents there, that's just how I was raised. So taking those kind of parents and sitting them in front of a coach, it's like, right, your daughter's going to the Olympics. <laughs> I think their immediate response was no. <laughs> like, no, she's not. But there's a lot of factors that make an Olympian. I wasn't an only child. I had siblings and I had family and I was gonna uproot everyone for my dream. <laughs> and I'm also a kid, I'm not working at this point, which means they have to invest their own money into me for the chance that I might do all right. My sister was also in university at the time and the United States makes it surprisingly hard to go to school in a different state. And then beyond that, the out-of-state tuition fees are criminal. <laughs> if you'd like to pay the normal fees and not out-of-state fees, you have to live in the state four to five years before you can even apply as a resident of that state. It's ironically very close to the amount of time that you need for university. <laughs> it's almost like it's been planned that way. <laughs> Ultimately, considering the factors of probability of me actually getting to the Olympics, uprooting my family, the investment, and then the longevity of the career itself, I just decided I shouldn't go to the Olympics. As a figure skater, I was probably my best around ages 12 to 16. Those are probably my golden years before I started to lose interest. There were a few other factors that played into me not wanting to be a competitive skater anymore. One was friendships. My closest friend at the ice rink decided to quit before me. And fair enough there, I think she was really done with the sport and wanted to focus on other sports and had friends elsewhere and less drama elsewhere. So good job her for getting out when she did actually. When you do stop skating, oh, the rink kind of shuns you. There's like a certain air that changes when you visit again. Everyone's just like staring and they, they kind of shun. So I think that also keeps people in the sport longer though, because you're just scared to leave. You're scared all of your relationships with everyone you've spent the last like 10 years with are just gonna 
go. I will say as well, when it comes to going to the Olympics, staying on that topic, I do think there's a level of insanity, and I mean that in the best way possible, to become an Olympian. You cannot do things halfway. Pain will be part of your life. You have to be incredibly dedicated, have to have the finances for it, the family for it, the friendships for it, and you need a competitive drive that makes you want to defy physics. Also, when you are at that level of athlete, you look at the standards of what is humanly possible and you go, no, I could do better. But with everything I had gone through with skating personally, by the end of it, I just wanted to have fun. That was the result of everything I went through. I went through so much of the ice rink. I should probably just cover that all in another video. I will give a little bit of an insight here though. <laughs> I enjoyed skating so much. I love figure skating and mostly I enjoyed the ice rink, the atmosphere, and the friends. Outside of skating and outside of the rink, I was struggling with mutism and I was struggling with a lot of different things that are so much clearer now, but at the time I did not understand what was happening. My home life was a little bit messy. My school life, I was a very good student, did well academically. Socially, I was being bullied and I just bad. <laughs> very, very bad. But the ice rink, no one had met me there before and I was encouraged to be the extroverted person that I actually am. And so on the ice, I just felt so much like myself because all of those introverted restrictions that were being placed on me in every other aspect of my life, I didn't have to deal with those. I was actually encouraged to not be like that on the ice rink, which I think is why figure skating and sports suited me so well. Every other aspect of my life, I was told to be quiet and I was told to not try to stand out too much. And then skating, I was told, have at it, <laughs> go for it, be weird, be eccentric, do it. And so ice skating became my very, very happy place for a very long time, up until it went to rubbish. <laughs> the reason it went to rubbish was not me and not the skaters, it was the parents and it was the coaches, <laughs> which is very typical in show sports. The parents, some of them didn't like each other and it made issues for us kids. <laughs> there was also a level of competition between the parents off ice where it's like who could have the best dress, who could afford the best coaches, whose kid was actually the best skater. It was just a hierarchy in itself. And if they wanted to act like the kids didn't know what was going on, the kids always know what's going on. They know everything. If you think there's anything you're hiding from a kid, <laughs> You are not. They know everything. They're just pretending not to. There definitely came a time period in skating where I could have quit a lot sooner and I didn't because of the shaming thing. The rink just really started having issues between money issues and coaches. <laughs> it just went bad. Some of my coaches were absolutely lovely. They are brilliant people. I am still friends with them today and I could not cherish them more. They are just such a pivotal moment of my childhood. I am so grateful to them, their existence, and the fact that they gave me their time. You helped me so much as a person, and I am just so grateful. <laughs> and then there's these other coaches. <laughs> and some of them didn't even coach me, or I only took one or two lessons from them, or maybe just one season with them. <laughs> they kind of ruined things. Just to quickly cover this roundup, some were doing illegal drugs in the back, others were asking the doctors that I started to prescribe them narcotics for them and their students, Another one went off the rails and damaged the property. One brought a gun to a competition. We had a crazy coach who was teaching his students how to cheat the judges. That one managed to divide the ice rink as well and hit the students, including me. Sucked. And then let's also just throw in a dash of mental abuse. Just a dash. And I already had family issues and school issues and all of that, and then all of a sudden my happy place became the place I was just scared to go to. See, settled, but at that point my heart was not there anymore. There were some coaches that got in that were good. They were nice. So to my very last coach who came in, who probably saw me as a skater and was like, she's actually quite good. Why isn't she doing better? Why is she so silly on the ice? Why is she not taking this seriously? There were reasons. <laughs> I had hit a point of, I just want to have fun. And that is all. Obviously at this point I'm being near the end of high school and so I'm thinking about careers and do I continue with skating, coaching, skating, Disney on ice. There were all these options with figure skating and ultimately I decided I could come back to be a figure skating coach at any time. And as far as schooling and stuff goes, I have a fallback of I can always be a figure skating coach. And so I don't necessarily need university for what I'm gonna go do, which is run off to England, become a painter, do YouTube, and see what happens. Was I having an early life crisis at that point? 
probably, but you know what? Everything worked out for me, I think. And now I'm here with you guys and I'm having a lovely time and I've got lots of things lined up in my career that I'm so excited about. I have a life that I really enjoy now and it's a life that I've very much made for myself after overcoming those issues, overcoming life issues, and then just running away with it. <laughs> Just to summarize the video though, and the topic of the video, there are a lot of factors that go into becoming Olympian. There are so many things that need to happen right for it to happen. And with me, it did not align. It kind of started to align. I could have taken a leap. I just think personally, I didn't have all of the support that I needed at the time between friends, family, coaches, and investment for me to have done it. There's that, those are just some major factors that really need to be just right. Even then, you're still gonna struggle. And that's the reason I ran off to England and I decided to become an artist and YouTuber. I would like to do more videos on figure skating because as I've said in the start of the video, it might not seem like it now, but I love figure skating. I do love it. I love the sport in itself. It's just there's there's a bunch of bad people, lots of bad people around me with it, but overall skating is lovely. Skating in itself is such a fun sport. It's a sport where the practice is fun, the competition is fun, the costumes are fun, the friendships you can make from it are brilliant, and then just the feeling of the dance on the ice, it's such a good feeling. The feeling of landing a jump that you've struggled on for so long or finishing a footwork sequence and knowing at the end of it, I did good. Like, that's a great feeling. Monday is my new upload day and I am working all week in London, so expect a London themed video next week. Cool. Spice, spice, spice.